YouTube, how's it going? Terrible Take Tuesday is back. A series we started last year and had some fun with. Uh, seems like a fan favorite, so we wanted to bring it back here for you guys. What we do here is take a look at some terrible, maybe some bold takes around the NFL, whether it's media, um, you know, on TV, articles, Twitter, just any kind of post. And, and we, we break them down. I break them down here. I decide what's terrible about them. Maybe sometimes I don't think they're that terrible. Maybe maybe they're just bold, you know. And these are entered by you guys, and we'll discuss uh, how you can get on next week's episode shortly here. So excited to bring this back. Uh, 50K is our sub goal, but as of recording this video, we are 10 subscribers away from 50K. So I'm thinking we're going to get there today. On the day Terrible Take Tuesday, it makes a return, so that's pretty cool. They really appreciate the support. You're going to want to follow that Twitter. Uh, you know, There's going to be a bunch of polls and NFL discussions on there, and that's actually, actually how you enter Terrible Take Tuesday. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, but any link that you need for anything like that, including our podcast, is down below, comments and description. But uh, the first entry of Episode 1 in 2020 of Terrible Take Tuesday uh, is from... YZ80, hopefully I'm pronouncing everyone's names right, but that's him on Twitter. I'll be pretty cool if everybody, we can get, kind of get a follow train going. Anybody that gets on here, you go follow them, and you'll get some follows back if you enter in. Um, so it'll be pretty cool. Um, so shout out to him for pointing me in the direction of Gil Brandt's post here that we'll break down in a second. Uh, if you want to send in your entries for next week or maybe the week after, uh, screenshot it or link it to me on Twitter. I actually have a post already on Twitter if you want to reply to that, but if you just Mention me on Twitter, at Godhouse NFL, and send in your, your terrible take for next week. Uh, that would be very cool, and then you could possibly get on and get a shout-out. So what we had sent here was Gil Brandt, an article from Gil Brandt. Somebody here uh, from Instagram made, it looked like, made a graphic out of it, so appreciate that. But Gil Brandt decided to rank his top 10 quarterback-receiver duos in the NFL. And what stands out to me here and what makes this a terrible take is Patrick Mahomes and Tyreek Hill down at five. You know, Kyler Murray and DeAndre Hopkins are going to be pretty fun. Going to be pretty fun, but they haven't played with each other yet. Kyler Murray in his second year. Yeah, Hopkins has been on the Texans his whole career. I mean, how could Patrick Mahomes and Tyreek Hill be two spots below them? You know, I kind of got a problem with Prescott and Cooper ahead of them. Maybe Matt Ryan and Julio Jones uh, ahead of them. Um, you know, so but ha having the Cardinals out of the Chiefs in this category is is pretty bad, pretty pretty. And even you know, you look down the list. What else is stands out? You know, I would probably put Brady and Evans, or even Brady and Godwin, a little higher, but not terrible enough. Uh, but Rodgers and Adams, you know, you'd think would be higher uh, than seven. Uh, and then Tannehill and Brown, I, you know, I think that's more bold. I'm not gonna say, yeah, that's a terrible take. It's more bold. Um, Stafford, when you see stay healthy, yeah, I would say Rivers and Hilton making the top ten is pretty is pretty bad there. I think, uh, you know, at some point, if this was a duo some time ago, then yes, but uh, it definitely not top ten. Uh, so Gil Brandt, uh, you know, just just going, getting a little crazy, getting a little wild with this one, but mainly, yeah, mainly what stands out is, I mean, I I talked about it, but Mahomes and Hill. Uh, being down at five is pretty ridiculous. And the next is probably yeah, Rogers Adams being down at seven. And then Rivers and Hilton shouldn't really be on this list, in my opinion. So appreciate you sending me that on Twitter. A shout out to, to Wheezy, YZ80. Uh, and you can, send, again, you can send your entries for next week or whatever week, because we, we're going to do this every single Tuesday on the Goat House. We're on to the second one, and he sent us another one. Uh, so another one entered here. This one looks like it's from an Instagram post, NFL polls. Uh, I usually want to stick to, um, you know, more of the media. Yeah, Gil Brandt's a well-known person. So I kind of want to, you know, sometimes people send me, like, Twitter posts from some random person. You know, I don't really want to see that uh, here, unfortunately. But NFC's overrated players, uh, and there's a list of the players here. And, man, these are – you know, everyone's got their opinion – and if you think Dak Prescott's, um, you know, guys like Dak Prescott are, are overrated, you know, I'm not going to, I don't agree with it, but I'm not going to call that terrible. You know, what what I, what I don't like here, what I think is terrible here um, is, is got, you know, Dwayne Haskins. I mean, who's, who, who is overrated in Dwayne Haskins? He's in the second year. I think, if anything, he might be underrated. You know, people look at the stats, him getting thrown into a terrible situation last year. Uh, and I thought he started to pick it up, which kind of goes unnoticed as the season went on, as his season went on. 
Um, so if anything, I'm not going to call him underrated, but if anything, he's underrated. I don't know what makes – I mean, guys like Trey Boston. I mean, who is – Hyping up Trey Boston. Who is making him overrated? Nobody is. You know, maybe he got paid a little more than we expected. Maybe that's why he's on here. Uh, I don't know. I don't think Christian Kirk is uh, an overrated player. Um, you know, I think he put a guy like Rashad Penny just because the Seahawks drafted him higher than expected. I, I don't think that's what makes an overrated player. You know, I think if one team is higher on a player than the rest, I don't think that makes him an overrated player. I think what the – you know, the, the everybody, you know, how they view the player, you know, what the media puts out, you know, everything together. Um, I think that's kind of what makes overrated players. Marvin Jones, I wouldn't I would say if anything, he's underrated. I think he's a it's just about staying healthy for him. I think he's a really good receiver. I think he's an underrated receiver. He's gotta stay healthy. Uh, I'm assuming Marcus Williams is up there just because PFF was pretty high on him last year, so I guess that's understandable. I just wouldn't call him overrated. Uh, but the you know, the ultimate one here is Tom Brady. In my opinion, the greatest of all time. I mean, I'd say how dare you put him up here. But maybe because he goes to a different team and there's a lot of hype around him. And uh, that's why he's on here. But I just don't think you can call him an overrated player. I just I just really don't see how you could. So this, this was pretty brutal. I, I think uh, they kind of contradict themselves here. I think some players are on here because, yeah, because maybe they think Rashad Penny, since he was drafted higher than everyone thought, uh, they, he's calling him overrated because the Seahawks overrate him. Same with Trey Boston and the Panthers. He got paid more than you expected, so one team is overrating him. So they kind of went that route, like how the team views him, how he gets paid or where he gets drafted. But then you got guys like you know Tom Brady and um, you know Marcus Williams, a PFF's high in him. So uh, you know, and then Dwayne Haskins, maybe yeah. You kind of back and forth on what you're your definition of overrated is to me, in my opinion. Um, like guys like Carson Wentz and Jared Goff, you know, maybe like the whole world, you know, kind of just waiting, you know, kind of been hyping those guys up. So it's a different type of overrated. So uh, kind of contradict themselves a little bit. So yeah, that deserves a spot on terrible take Tuesday and not everything I think is terrible. You know, people have bold predictions. Um, you know, I, I'm not going to just say that's terrible just because I don't agree with it. That's where it kind of separate those, you know, um, but moving on to the next one, Bronco Summer 2020 on Twitter sent this one and appreciate it. Nick Wright had his record predictions for the upcoming season. Uh, Nick Wright uh, on a Fox Sports show there, of course, uh, and he had the Broncos at three and thirteen. And yeah, I'm not gonna put him up here because you know I, I'm kind of high on the Broncos for this year, as you can tell. Uh, and then this person is not Nick Wright. That is, so I can't say it's a terrible take just because they don't—they're not on the same page as me. That's really not why they're on here. I just don't see any logic uh, on having the Broncos with three wins, just in general, you know. Uh, and, and then being last in the West, you know, the Raiders are that much better than them. What is that? Seven games better than that? I don't know about that. Even the Chargers, maybe down. You know, maybe the quarterback issues with the Chargers, but the Broncos one really stands. You know, to me, that defense alone will win more than three games. And you factor in what they've done in the offseason. The offensive line is getting better. The receiver unit, I mean, not only went from, even though I'm a big Cortland Sutton fan, huge Cortland Sutton fan, but before with just Cortland Sutton, that's probably one of the worst in the NFL, went from that to, uh, you could argue, I know some of these guys haven't played yet, but if you're going to predict the future, uh, maybe the best receiver unit adding Jerry Judy and KJ Hamler or Cortland Sutton, go, you know, maybe the best receiver unit like, kind of going forward. Uh, and Drew Locke, you know, the, the only way you can go from here is up, in my opinion. Uh, you know, this is a, I, I talked about the defense. Um, you know, that pass rush is going to be ridiculous. The D line is going to be fantastic. You know, I like the, you know, the corner spot is where they can get better. But if you have the other pieces and you're getting pressure, you don't really have to value the cornerback position that high. And Vic Fangio does a fantastic job developing the corners either way. Um, so I, I just don't see any way. Uh, I mean, the Broncos, and I don't like comparing to the year before. People say, people always go, um, well, they got better players this year, so how they can have, a, how could they have a worse record? Well, every year is different. You know, you don't know how the schedule is. So, but at the same time, uh, just be how much better they got, how much of a disaster last year was. They had some kind of fluky games, and they still just were overall better. I, I just do not see any way um, they can go three and thirteen. I mean, there has to be a just a meltdown of I don't know I even know how to put it. You know, of injuries just piling up. Uh, from from the start and throughout the season, pretty much for them to be three and thirteen. So, um, 
Yeah, that that was a wild one. And I you know, you can kind of pick, you know, some of these other um, you know, Raiders 10 and 6, you know, I, it's not terrible, but it's bold. Chargers 6 and 10, maybe it's not terrible, but it's bold. I think he had the Buccaneers at 8 and 8 too. Maybe uh, adjustment period takes too long, so it's not terrible, but it's bold. So he went maybe, you know, I think some people in the media start to go just too too crazy, too bold, and I think what happened here was he pretty much did every other team first, and some teams kind of got the rest of it, and he already have, has given out the wins, and that kind of fell under the Broncos category, so he was kind of stuck putting them at 3-13. and 13. I'm, uh, I'm going to assume that's what happened here, so pretty bad. Pretty bad there. Uh, appreciate you sending me that on Twitter. Bronco Summer, he gets the shout out. Again, if we want to start a follow train here, anybody that appears on this on these videos, you you can't it can't hurt to go follow them. It went once you're on, you'll get a follow back. You know, everybody respect everybody here. It's 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 the beauty. It's totally your decision. So I'm just trying to get going, getting something good going here. You know, uh, we're moving on uh, to uh, Stephen Paul Steelers Punk One sent this to me. Uh, and we got top defense. This is according to CBS. So CBS, you know, pretty big, making these defensive rankings, and oh boy, do I disagree with this list. Uh, I guess there's a difference between disagreeing and just having different opinions and then it being terrible, but, I mean, there's just so many here that I don't know, you know. Uh, I, I think, I mean, the Saints, take a look at the Saints. This is what stands out first probably. Um, a complete defense, a very complete team, a top tier team for sure, going to be contending for a Super Bowl for sure. Uh, but to have them ahead of the Steelers, the Bears, the Chargers, even the Broncos, but mainly the Steelers and the Bears and the and the Chargers, in my opinion, uh, it's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. Those teams, without a question, have a better defense than the Saints. You know, the Saints will give up. They will give up some yards to the air. You know that that'll cost them sometimes. And, you know, I guess it's about if the D-line stays healthy, then they're better because we see that the, kind of the rest of the defense, that kind of goes back to my, my opinion on the secondary, you know, you don't really need to value the secondary all that much if, you know, you can get good pressure. And the secondary plays better when, you know, guys like Davenport, guys like Sheldon Rankins are healthy. So it's a good defense, don't get me wrong, when it's healthy. But, yeah, the secondary is weaker at times. Um, you know, they pretty much need – guys like Cam Jordan to be on his best game, you know, every week, which is not out of the question to, to happen. Uh, but really, you know, I'm not trying to knock the Saints defense at all here. It's mainly, a, are you kidding me with the Steelers and the Bears and I would say the Chargers, but mainly the, I think almost everybody on the planet, even Saints fans would have to agree the Steelers and the Bears defense is just better, just better than the Saints. Um, so that's the terrible part. I, you know, I wouldn't have the Patriots up at three. It's kind of borderline terrible. Um, you know, losing Van Noy, losing Jamie Collins. I mean, even Danny Shelton was pretty big for them last year. Um, you know, high tower aging, the secondary age, the safety group aging. They still have Bill Belichick, so that's why it's not maybe terrible. But I just don't see them being three. Um, I'm a big Don Martindale fan, the Ravens defensive coordinator. I like what they did with the defensive line. You know, they're adding, they're finally adding pressure from the defensive line. Uh, I think they have the better secondary in football, which, you know, I think pass rush is definitely more important. I don't really think that's an opinion. I think that should be fact. Um, so, and they don't have the actual edge rush. You know, they are got young with the inside linebacker. So, I don't know if I put them at one. You know, Martindale's always got those guys balling. Again, I love that, that corner unit. I love the, the whole secondary, really. I don't know if I'd put them at one. It's not terrible, of course, but since we're here, since we see this list, we're discussing it, of course. Um, so, it's more than about terrible takes here. Uh, we'll see if the Niners can repeat. I don't see why not. Uh, the Bills I like a lot um, for defense. Eventually, I'll rank my defense. We'll get there eventually down the road of the offseason. I wouldn't put the Rams. They, the, the Rams should not be on this list. Uh, I think the secondary is going to be underrated. I think it's going to be a very good secondary. But, again, you kind of need more than that. It's pretty much just Aaron Donald in there uh, getting pressure. So the, you, you need more than that. You know, I like the draft. I like you know, adding Terrell Lewis. Um you know, Burgess, uh, I think, kind of completes the secondary. He's going to play in a slot. Uh, but, yeah, overall, the secondary is going to be pretty good. Uh, you know, overall, you know, it's it's complete, I think. Uh, but top 10 defense, c come on now, come on. Uh, and then, yeah, the Chargers are better than nine to me. Uh, I mean, you got a unique Gus Bradley defense. Uh, you got the pass rush 
with uh, Bosa and Ingram, of course. You know, Ingram doing kind of different things, uh, you know, t- you know, helping the defense in multiple ways just as a pass rusher. Uh, Jerry Tillery in his second year, they added Linval Joseph. Hopefully he stays healthy. It's a good nose tackle. I mean, you got Derwin James back this year, uh, too. I mean, he's more than a safety, obviously. I don't have to really go in detail about that. You added, you added Chris Harris. You already have Casey Hayward. Desmond King's a ball player, whatever you put him. I mean, maybe a guy like Nasir Adderley, who we didn't really get to see last year, a rookie last year out of Delaware, he can step up. Uh, and then adding Kenneth Murray, who's going to provide pass rush and then supporting the run inside there. Uh, I mean, you can keep going on the list here. I think a guy like Nwosu, uh rookie a couple years ago at USC, is a big-time you know rotation guy or could play. Uh, I mean, another guy, True Tranquil, I think is a really good player that was kind of more the rotation guy last year, and he was only a rookie. So I think they're just by default they're getting better, but they also added some pieces. I mean, this is a really good defense that's going to do what? The most important thing, in my opinion, is – getting pressure, and that's from every level, from the outside, from the inside, from the D-line. Um, you know, I talked about, you know, why, why I said the inside, I talked about Kenneth Murray. He brings some good blitzing, uh, and he can even play the edge. And then you look at the next level, they have the secondary as well. So I think the Chargers are better than nine defense, you know. So, But the main part here is the Steelers, Bears, underneath the Saints. Uh, I'd throw the Chargers in that category, and then Rams being on this list. And I really wouldn't really I, – I wouldn't put the Ravens at one. I wouldn't put the Patriots at three. So – uh, CBS, this was all over the place here. This this felt like it was all over the place. Next up, um, from JJ Domination on YouTube, Mastro Jeffrey is the handle. Uh, appreciate you uh, sending this to me here. We got a 2016 NFL redraft. You see the original picks on the left. And then Chris Sims always got something bold kind of going on. Yeah, it's a likable guy, you know, TV personality for me at least. Uh, but, yeah, kind of gotten uh, pretty bold at times. And, yeah, this was interesting. You know, I – I don't know if it's too terrible, but uh, or on the level of terrible, but what stands out to me is, uh, I mean, you know, Tyree Kill and Michael Thomas. I mean, both great receivers in today's game. Uh, I mean, what? Would Tyree Kill go five and Michael Thomas go eight? You know, would it would it be flipped? So that's kind of the question there. Um, as much as I like Chris Jones, you know, I, I consider him an elite defensive lineman. You know, maybe not a lot of people will, uh, but. Okay, so back up a little bit. Redrafts are kind of just knowing what we know now. They're just for fun. You know, sometimes they're kind of silly, it feels like. But So teams know what we know in the league now, okay? Chris Jones he has elite defense lineman. But would the Ravens really not go with Ronnie Stanley? Would they just – we don't want Ronnie – you know, it's, it's, it's tough to see this. So that's the kind of the main thing of this. Uh, they would pass on their guy that's kind of brought their offensive line success – uh, Lamar, Jackson, Lamar Jackson's success, a guy that's continuing to grow, could be maybe the best tackle in football at any given time. So I don't, you know, as good as Chris Jones is, it'll be tough to for them to pass on their own guy there, you know. Um, and, it, yeah, again, the Tyreek Hill, Michael Thomas probably should flip those. I don't know if the Bears would go to Forrest Buckner route. Yeah, maybe worthy of a top ten pick. I, you know, I just wasn't really feeling that one. Uh, you know, they would probably, maybe they would go Laramie Tunsil even, but um, – yeah, just interesting. It's an interesting thing to see, you know. But mainly the Ravens thing stood out, and when you can see the flip of Carson Wentz and, uh, you know, and well, not even the flip of Carson Wentz and, and Jared Goff. You get Carson Wentz flipped up to one, but then Dak Prescott comes in there too. So Jared Goff not on the list. We don't even see Zeke on the list, which isn't. It's a little bold, but it's not too out there just because the value of the running back position. Uh, but yeah, Dak up at two. If the Eagles can't get Carson Wentz, perhaps uh, it's possible. It's possible. So. Uh, yeah, interesting one. And then we move on to uh, uh, one of my favorite ones probably. Matt Miller on Twitter sent to us by DB24. Burnsy24 is the handle. Uh, Matt with uh, – I mean, this isn't really – I don't know if this is a terrible take because usually the terrible takes are just so bold that they end up being terrible. This is just – you know, I don't even know how to describe it. He said he, – this. so this was a post um, – I wish it said the what the post was about. This was their most under – his most under – and you can see the date – um, this was yesterday, actually. Most underrated player on each NFL team for this year, uh, for this upcoming season. Uh, and he had Malik Collins for the Cowboys. And Malik Collins definitely signed with the Las Vegas Raiders this offseason. So he is not on the Cowboys. So, um, you know, I guess, the, I guess you know, trying to keep up with all the new signings where guys are. It's, it's, sometimes it could be tough, but something I'm making sure I'm right on before I post it. So, uh, that yeah, that was a, that was a bad one. That was that was a, that was a bad one. So he he had uh, he still thinks that the Millie Collins is on the Cowboys basically. So he should have been with the Raiders. So a different player should be here with the Cowboys. Uh, but yeah, another funny part is you know people kind of let him have it in the comments. I'm assuming, 
and he kind of just stuck with it. So maybe he doesn't read the comments, uh, but you know, you think he would uh, delete it and fix it by now. So that that was it's kind of a funny one there. But uh, and then we got one more here, and nobody sent me this one. This is one I found on my own. So I guess shout out to the Goat House here. Um, so sometimes I'll just throw in one that I find, uh, and this is the last one of the video. We got a post from Fox NFL. It looks like Instagram. And they basically asked the question, which is tougher? Which is a harder task is what they're asking. Make a catch while guarded by Stephon Gilmore. Break up a pass while guarding Michael Thomas. And then Devont so I guess Devontae Parker makes terrible take Tuesday here. He said A. So he thinks it's tougher to make a catch while guarded by Stephon Gilmore. And I guess you can argue both sides. But to me... To me, and these are both elite players, elite players at their position. To me, it's really no question. And it's really not that much of the players. Yeah, the players are great. It's tough to do both. Uh, but to me, that which one's harder to do, um, I mean, I look at the positions. It is much harder to play the cornerback position. Um, and, you know, looking at what would, you know, put myself out there, anybody that, you know, that, that can think about what would be tougher for you. I mean, we would get down, all of us, you know, probably here would probably – get absolutely dominated by either player, obviously. They're professional athletes. But I would have a better chance, a better chance. Doesn't mean it's going to be easy. Doesn't mean I'm going to complete the task. A better chance to get open and make a catch on Stephon Gilmore than guard Michael Thomas. The cornerback position is just that much harder to play. Um, you know, guarding a guy like that um, with that physicality, that footwork of Michael Thomas. I mean, even going, you know, Gilmore probably wouldn't let you go. You know, he'd probably press you so good. Um, be that physical with you, and he can keep up with you no matter how fast you are. Um, you know, so t both would be just an insane amount tougher. But uh, the receiver position is a little easier to play. Cornerback after quarterback might be the hardest position to play on the field. I mean, it's kind of common sense stuff too. You think about, you know, what the what the cornerback has to do. He pretty much has to stay with the receiver, um, and then beat him after that. You know, it's. I mean, the receiver knows what he's doing. The cornerback really, really doesn't. He just knows he has to stay with this guy. He can go anywhere. He can run any route. And then he has to make a play on the ball, um, you know, which the quarterback is delivering to the receiver. So it's kind of common sense stuff at the cornerback position. Uh, really, defense in general is pretty much harder because it's a lot of it's guessing game. And then you got to do more after that. you got to guess, but then you got to make that extra play. So for me, there's no question that it would be – it would be – um, you know, nothing's easy here, but it would be so much tougher for for me or I think any player out there to go. Uh, and I, I actually play, you know, not that it means anything, here, but I actually played corner and didn't play receiver, but I think it would be easier. Nothing's easy again, can't stress enough, to be the receiver in this situation. So uh, it would be harder for me to play corner against Michael Thomas. I think it would be harder for a lot of the NFL players in general as well um, just playing that corner cornerback position against a elite receiver here on the rise. So uh, I disagree with Devontae Parker there. Uh, I'm a fan of Devontae Parker, though. Really, really impressed with, um, you know, he, he was able to play to his level last year, how much he stepped up, the improvement, and then he got his contract he deserves. Uh, and then, if yeah, if you go find this post, um, they kind of got, in, got into it a little bit. I mean, you know, Michael Thomas likes to talk lately, so maybe he gets a little carried away, but you, know, you, you got to love some you gotta love some good, some good some good trash talk. You're part of the game here, even when the game's not going on. So uh, pretty funny stuff there, cool stuff. So, again, next week we'll do this again. You can you can send them in the, to uh, the Goat House on Twitter. Tweet at me. Um, there's even a post about Terrible Take Tuesday pinned uh, to the Twitter, so you can kind of reply to that if that's easier. That would be great uh, either way, and I will give you the shout-out. If we can get a, sh uh, a follow train going, that would be pretty cool here. Make sure you follow that Twitter, if you're my Twitter, if you're heading to it as well. would really appreciate that. Really appreciate the support. Uh, glad that we can bring this series back. Looking forward to more off-season videos, podcasts, and then in-season. We got you covered with all kinds of content as well. So subscribe, follow that Twitter. That's going to do it for this one. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.